Well, good evening and welcome to our first State of the College conversation with our Dean, Deanna Kratz. I am Ilap Nahata, Professor Emeritus here at the College of Pharmacy, and I am honored to serve as your host tonight. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First, this webinar is being recorded to be able to share with the, those who could not attend. Second, we will take questions from the audience at the end. So please feel free to submit them at any time throughout the event through the Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And finally, closed captioning is available at the bottom of your screen as needed. And now I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Deanna Kratz, who began her appointment as the Dean of our college on September 1, 2023. Dean Kratz returned to her alma mater from the University of California, San Francisco, UCSF, where she served as professor and chair of the Department of Bioengineering and Therapeutic Sciences in the schools of pharmacy and medicine. She also held the, the prestigious Jerry Goyen Presidential Chair for the Advancement of Pharmacy. Deanna has been an exceptional academic leader and an internationally known scholar who has successfully applied human genetic tools to understand drug toxicity. Her compelling research question has been, how and why does chemotherapy used to treat common types of cancers cause nerve damage, what we call peripheral neuropathy? This is an extremely important question in patient care because it happens so frequently and the nerve damage leads to discomfort, pain, weakness, numbness, in arms and legs and other parts of the body. Also important to know is that some patients may recover soon, while others may continue to have this problem for months and years after exposure to chemotherapy. Given the clinical significance of this work, it's no wonder that the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, has funded her lab throughout her career. This is exactly the type of work that is required to explain why patients respond differently to the same drug and dosage regimens for efficacy or toxicity to transform drug therapy and achieve better clinical outcomes. I am pleased to say that Deanna earned her BS degree in pharmacy from Ohio State in 1985 and her PhD in pharmaceutics from the University of Washington. She then completed her postdoctoral fellowship training at uh, National Inst Cancer Institute before joining the faculty at UCSF. Welcome, Deanna, and let's get started with some questions. The first question I want to ask is, uh, I already shared some highlights of your professional journey. Could you please share with us a bit about yourself? Sure, sure, and, and thank you so much for that kind introduction, and it's really um, my honor to be here and to be serving the college in, in this role. Um, so uh, some of you I might have uh, heard from me already that I grew up in Ohio. I grew up in Northwest Ohio in Finley and um, have been a Buckeye all my life, so it's also fun to be back and be a Buckeye again. Um, I, you know, I guess I, um, you know, I grew up in a relatively small town, uh, knew healthcare, and always thought I wanted to uh, go into some healthcare field because that's what I saw around me. Um, but really uh, enjoyed science and math in high school. And so um, somehow, just from knowing the pharmacy across the street from the hospital where I volunteered, I thought, oh, that sounds fun. So I ended up here. Um, you know, I grew up in a time when you didn't have all the information that you know about professions now. So you sort of look around and see what people are doing. 
Um, I was always intrigued by science. My uh, father is an agronomist and worked for Ohio State Cooperative Extension Service. So I spent summers going out in the field with him and looking at his little test crops and you know, they were testing different herbicides and trying to see what, what worked the best. Um, so I did kind of have that science bug as a, as a young kid. Um, but I think, um, you know, I didn't, wasn't really until I got here at Ohio State and in a college of pharmacy that I envisioned that I could be a scientist. I wasn't any, I didn't know a, a, a scientist, a lab-based scientist. And so, um, you know, it was really being here that really set the path for my career. So was it undergraduate research? That yes, it was. So when I, um, you know, in your early years, you probably remember we had a chance to specialize. You could specialize on the administration side or in clinical practice or in, in pharmaceutical research. And so I chose the pharmaceutical research pathway and had the pleasure of being uh, mentored by uh, Dr. Dick Bruning, who was the longtime chair of pharmacy practice. That's right. And so he really got me excited about research and um, learned pharmacokinetics from him. And he is the one who sort of pushed me, steered me toward graduate school. So I, I really owe that uh, to him that I ended up in the field and really my work does come from the ideas of pharmacokinetics and really understanding optimization of, of drug therapy. So yeah, so it's really Ohio State that set me on that path. It's wonderful. You just completed the first year, mm -hmm. academic year. What are your first impressions of the college and Ohio State? Well, first of all, it's great to be back. Um, we're really enjoying being back on campus, being at Ohio State again, being in the college, uh, some very familiar looking halls in Parks Hall. <laughs> so it's like taking a walk back in time. Um, and really, I, I'm impressed by the people have been amazing. Uh, it's, really, it's, it's really heartening to see how much people love this place. I would say the, the students, the faculty, the staff, everybody has been welcoming. Um, they're very dedicated to their jobs. They really want to make sure we provide the best education for our students. We do the best research. And so that has, that has really um, been exciting for me to see. I've had a chance, I think, to meet almost everybody in the college now. So uh, I, I feel like I, I have a pretty good sense of what's going on. Um, you know, I think it's also an exciting time to be on campus. There's a lot going on. I'm really excited about research innovation on campus. Um, there's, uh, many of you might not know, there's a new uh, research campus on the other side of the river. We call it West Campus or Carmenton. There's a lot of very exciting interdisciplinary research. We have a couple of our faculty over there now and lots of opportunities, I think, for growth and interdisciplinary research because of some of these initiatives on campus. Um, so I think that adds uh, to my excitement about being back. I see a lot of, of possibilities. Uh, we also have, you know, of course, the medical center um, and the interactions that, that we can have with the medical center. All of those things, I think, um, have really excited me about the possibilities of what we um, can do here at Ohio State. And, and when you were here, everybody was in one building here. Right, right. When I was here, yeah, this was it, Parks <laughs> Hall. Now we're, you know, we have the building, part of the building next door. That's we right. have people, you know, across the river now. Um, so yeah, we're we're expanding, which is, is also exciting. Well, we're so happy to have you back. Thank you. I raised the question yesterday with uh, Bob Berkey, if you might remember, mm -hmm. he, he was a faculty here uh -huh. when you were here. He, uh, his area was history and ethics. Uh -huh. So I asked him that, is our current dean the first one that got a degree and came back as a dean? And uh, I believe you are, so, but, but he, I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> and he said, I think you're right. So he, he has written college history. Uh -huh. That's so right. Great to have you back. Yes, I have a copy of the latest college history that was That's written, great. so. <laughs> well, the U.S. News and World Report, uh, as you know, recently ranked our College of Pharmacy first in the state and fourth in the country among all 141 schools of pharmacy in the country. 
Can you comment on this great news, uh, how that happens and uh, what that means? Yes, of course. So first of all, we're extremely excited and proud about that. And really kudos to everyone who's been here, uh, the, you know, for a while working on this uh, before I came uh, to Henry, the, the previous dean and, and all the faculty, staff and students who really um, deserve this recognition. So I think, uh, you know, I think there's a number of things that have made us visible and that has really led to this increase in our ranking. You know, I think our, our students are really strong uh, nationally. There are difficulties filling classrooms full of pharmacy students, and, and we have not had that problem here, and we are recognized for that, for keeping a strong enrollment. Our students are, um, you know, really getting outstanding education. They're, you know, that's evident from our NAPLEX pass rates, for example. Uh, this year, they were 93.1% first time pass rate for the NAPLEX uh, board exam, and the national average is about 79%. So we're way above average. Uh, those numbers came out, you know, uh, shortly before the, the rankings as well. Um, it's the same for the jurisprudence exam. Our pass rate is 91%, and the national um, average is 74%. So again, really outstanding uh, success rates for our students. So that, of course, raises the reputation. Uh, we have to be doing something right. I think our education sure. is really strong. Um, I think we also have faculty that are you know, being recognized externally. Of course, uh, yourself. Um, winning the Remington Honor Medal this year. Uh, there are um, just recently, Dr. Sharon Baker was recognized by the American Society for Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics uh, with a Cancer Pharmacology Award. Um, Cynthia Carnes was named a AAAS Fellow. So I think my count is there's five uh, faculty now at Ohio State in College of Pharmacy that are AAAS Fellows. Um, we um, also have our practice faculty who won the uh, Lawrence Weaver Award for all their work in community engagement last year from AACP. All of these things are, you know, make us very visible as a college and our colleagues who are voting on these rankings are really sure. saying they must be doing things right there. So, And um, we are the only college that has received the Weaver Award twice. Yes, right. So. You know, so I think those those things all all make it. Um, you know, we're we have to be able to let the outside world know how we're doing to be, um, you know, to to get these rankings. And so I think our uh, communications and marketing this year, we've really been focused on an external view. Uh, coming from a you know on, on from the other coast where maybe the Midwest schools aren't as visible. You know, I said, wow, there's cool things being done here. Let's make yes. sure everybody else knows what we're doing. And so I really redirected the marketing communications to make sure that people are, are really um, hearing what's going on here. So that's great. My next couple of questions are about pharmacy education. Mm -hmm. So we are, of course, our primary mission is to educate and train our students. What stands out to you as our college trends in this area? Yeah, well, I think the PharmD curriculum, the integrated curriculum, we call it an I3 curriculum, is um, really exciting. It's the way, it's quite different from how uh, probably you and I went to pharmacy school, yes. right? <laughs> Where we just sat there and were lectured to all the time. Um, but really, it's um, really the integrated nature of it makes it... Um, you know, it, it just brings all the disciplines together around a topic. It's really real life. That's that's how it is. You don't have a pharmacokinetic question or, you know, a therapeutics question. You have a lot of things going on and you need to be able to synthesize a lot of information and apply it to your clinical problem that you're addressing. And I think this curriculum really does a great job of preparing our students for that. We do a lot of team-based learning. We have um, amazing new classroom, and by the end of next year or sometime early 2025, we'll have two new classrooms like this. 
that are allow us to do this team-based learning. Students work in, in table groups, the faculty are moving around the room, and there's a, a lot of interactive learning that's being done. Um, and again, that's also what they need to be able to do when they work in teams, when they leave here and in their profession. So that's really good training. Um, our experiential program is great. We also have, we have three years of lab that is closely connected to the uh, curriculum. And that, that lab experience is really meant to prepare them to advance to their appies and go out and start practicing as a student pharmacist and really applying what they learn in the classroom. And so I think all of those things are, are really um, just outstanding in, in the, well, in the IT curriculum. As, you know, IT is therapeutics, mm -hmm. but when we're doing patient cases, with me is a faculty from medicine and chemistry yeah. and from pharmacology. So we're all in the same room. Uh -huh. At one time, we didn't even know what other people were teaching. Exactly, right. So, so and, and we should, this is the way we should be teaching. It's great, um, yeah. you know, to see this really working. I, I, I know I went through a similar curriculum change myself as a faculty member. It's the hardest thing I think I did in my career is really shifting the way you teach, coming up with all new material. It's a lot harder to do this type of teaching. It takes a lot more preparation for our faculty. Mm -hmm. um, but the interactions that you have with other faculty it was really rewarding for me, and I'm sure it has been for Same you and with the me other and faculty. The students, students love it too, because they can integrate the knowledge from mm -hmm. all the subjects together. Yeah. The second part of that question is, the first was where we are. Mm -hmm. Now, where are we going? So, and what are your thoughts about the evolution of pharmacy education here and nationally, and how our college should continue to lead in this area? Yeah, I think um, when, I, when I came in in the fall, I said, wow, this is great. I love the curriculum. We've been doing it a while now. I, I believe it was 2016 that mm -hmm. it started. Um, we survived COVID. <laughs> and so now's a great time to take a step back, really assess what has worked, what can we, and of course there's constant updating of material and stuff, but really take a bigger step back and look and say, you know, where could we do a little better? What could we change? How can we improve um, the patient, the, the patient, the student experience? And uh, we've, so we've been doing that. That's been led by Kathy Kelly this year. And we're now in the process of really, you know, trying to take a look at that data and seeing what, you know, where can we make improvements? Mm -hmm. uh, a couple things stand out to me um, a, a classic thing that faculty do is they keep adding material and not taking it away. And so we do hear a lot about curriculum overload and I, I think it's real. It's a national issue that's talked about a lot in, um, among um, academics. And so I think we need to really take a look at that. Today, information is everywhere, right? And these young students, they know how to find it. What we need to do is really make sure that they can take information and synthesize it, critically evaluate it, and then be able to apply it to something new. And so I do think we still have um, in ways that we can improve in developing those critical thinking skills. A lot of the work that they do in the practice lab and in their team-based learning mm -hmm. does that, but we can improve and really focus the curriculum around critical thinking skills. And I think with that also, that's how we should assess them. We should assess them on these critical thinking skills, sure. realizing that knowledge, of course, knowledge is important, but we have access to knowledge. and. But can they, um, you know, can they solve problems? And so I think that's where we see the curriculum going in in the next several years. So so I'm excited to to see it evolve a little bit more. I think the other thing, and and this is, um, they have a reasonably strong um, interprofessional education uh, program here at Ohio State. So with the other health sciences yes. colleges. Mm -hmm. And that's also something that we need to just keep um, expanding on because all of healthcare is team-based healthcare. And so being able to have the communication skills and 
be able to, you know, provide that unique expertise that pharmacists have to a health problem is really important and, and we need to make sure our students are ready for that. There are not too many colleges of pharmacy that are located in one campus that has six other health science colleges. Oh, that, that is a huge advantage. So they can, you know, learn right, us, right alongside um, the medical students, the optometry, dentistry, nursing, you know, the social work and public health, they're all right there with them. And, and another comprehensive, is, such a yeah. comprehensive university. So all the camp, every, all the measures are in one place. Yeah, so. no, I mean, that, that is a huge advantage of, of a campus like this. And it's a, it's a good selling point when we're trying to tell the students what kind of education you'll get here because we do have access to all these other, you know, all of our colleagues in the health sciences and across campus. Yeah, I have talked to a number of students and asked them, you know, what changed your mind about, they, they thought they were going to go to ABC and uh -huh. Ohio State in the beginning, their mind was B or C. I said, what made it an A? And they said, coming here and visiting and just felt right. Mm -hmm. I should be here. So That's wonderful. Says a lot. Yes. And so many, I, I've met many students who are visiting on their um, admitted students days and they were in awe at seeing like the medical center is literally steps across the street. That's and true. so they really thought, wow, I'm going to be right here in the middle of all this, you know, health care and health education. So. But we're also unique in having a BSPS program, Bachelor's mm -hmm. of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences. Mm -hmm. Not many schools have that. And it's really important feeder program for us. So I wanted to get your your thoughts on, on how having that program helps mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and where, what can we do better with that program. Yeah, so, so I was excited. I, I, I was actually really familiar with the BSPS program because I was the beneficiary of it as a graduate program director at UCSF and we recruited a number of just outstanding uh, BSPS graduates to our PhD program. So I was, well, I was very familiar with it. Uh, it was a place we'd like to recruit from. Um, I'm, I was excited to see how strong it was and how much it has grown. And I think there's, a number of reasons for that. It's obviously, as you mentioned, it's a pathway program for us. It brings a lot of people into our PharmD program, and that's really important, especially with declining enrollments na nationwide. So we also see that many of our colleagues are trying to copy us yes. <laughs> and do this because they realize that it's helped our enrollment. Um, but I think, and so it's great for pharmacy um, but it also is a, an amazing foundation for any pre-health student. And it really provides a lot of opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. In the graduating class this year, we had students going to dentistry school, medical school, veterinary school, graduate school. So all different possibilities. Um, and so I think there's, you know, there's a, it's a, it's a great overall pre-health um, program. I think the students they they really benefit and they realize that they're in they're on a large campus, but they're in a small undergraduate program. That's true. And so that they we really give them individual attention. We help you know we help the students with their early struggles in chemistry, for example. We have support for that. Mm -hmm. We have you know career advice and all of that that you know, they don't have to look very hard because it is a relatively small program. Um, so we have some ideas about, you know, enhancing even more. Um, it, the number of students who are doing undergraduate research from that program continues to increase. Um, and this research is anything from, you know, it could be some observational um, study, uh, you know, and something in the social science side of pharmacy to some basic drug discovery research and everything in between. So it's really, a, it's whatever is interesting to the student. Um, so we wanna keep increasing that. We might add some sort of capstone project uh, to the degree um, to really engage our students even, even further. 
I think the um, other exciting thing, which I really didn't appreciate until I got here, is on top of, so we our number of students is increasing for the BSPS major, but we also have a, a large number of students who get a minor in BSPS. And really that comes from our um, general ed courses, which I don't, I'm not sure any college of pharmacy does this. Mm -hmm. And every place I go, I tell people about this and they're just in awe. But we are able to, um, you know, offer general ed courses to undergraduates in, you know, exciting topics around something related to pharmacy. So for example, a, a writing class that is focused on drugs in America mm -hmm. and the culture of drugs in America. Um, and all of those courses, so I, I believe we have 11 or 12 different courses now, and all of those are a way for us to introduce the profession of pharmacy. Excellent. And so it's a great way to get more students interested in pharmacy. Yes. Even those who aren't going to go into pharmacy, I think they probably have a different idea about the profession um, because we take that opportunity to actually introduce them to the profession as well. And so I think, I mean, that is really um, an amazing program that, you know, has, has led to really having a bigger presence among the undergraduate students on campus. You know, our college is probably among the maybe 10% of the colleges in the country that have filled classes right. in mm -hmm. a predictable way year after year after year. Yeah. That's and, wonderful. And I think, you know, this, this way that we introduce undergraduates really contributes to that. The same, the BSPS program, you know, one of the first classes they take is an introduction to pharmacy. So we're already getting them to think about what opportunities, what career opportunities could there be in the profession? Yes. And so I think that's really important. So our College of Pharmacy, as you know, has been a leader both in Ohio and nationally in advancing the profession of pharmacy. Mm -hmm. How important is that work for us and uh, how might we overcome the challenges currently faced in the profession to lead with practice innovations and to benefit the profession and patients and community at large. Yeah, so so first I, I, I should say that I've really enjoyed, um, of course I've always had my career has been in a college of pharmacy, but to really be back thinking about the practice of pharmacy has right. been really exciting for me. I was a little bit on the periphery, I heard about things, but now I've really been in the thick of it and learning a lot. Um, so I'm excited about a lot of the things that have changed in the right. profession, but I think there's a lot more that we could do and um, we have, you know, as you know, we have partnerships. We have shared faculty with APHA and OPA. Um, we also have a very close relationship with um, the legislative affairs team through the medical center. So we work closely with them on a lot of legislative issues and lots of advocacy work generally for the profession. So I think we have we have a long way to go, in, especially in Ohio. We, you know, we were way out there in the front, I think, and now we've watched these states around us really uh, make some changes that are allowing pharmacists to, you know, do more clinical services, do the things that we're training our students to do, and so I, it's a big focus of um, our faculty here to keep pushing that forward. I think as the number one college in the state, really our, you know, from our land grant institution, we should be the leaders in those efforts. And so we are really trying to um, push that forward and that will be a, an initiative as, as part of uh, moving forward. So I think the other area um, where we have opportunities to, you know, really think about expanding the profession we also have a shared faculty with a cooperative extension service. And so one of the needs in healthcare, of course, is in rural populations. And so by um, doing more through the cooperative extension service, we you know, will be able to um, hopefully push out some of these expanded services if we can get to that point where mm -hmm. you know, we're able to, uh, to do more um, I think that's a, another great opportunity and some, something that we would like to be a leader in. 
And we have a lot more integration now between the medical center and here. The practitioners from there come here to teach in our courses Absolutely. and our faculty have joint appointments and Absolutely. vice versa. Absolutely. That's very right. healthy uh -huh. mm -hmm. for students to get the cutting edge information. Right, right. And you know, having having those people who are practicing day in and day out really you know, bringing that expertise into the classroom is really important. So next question is going to be about research. So mm -hmm. conducting impactful research on drug discovery, development, optimal use of medications has always been part of, important part of our mission. Can you speak about the research being done at the college and uh, what you see as our strengths and opportunities for growth uh, in this area? Um, sure, sure. Um, so first of all, research is, um, has really been getting stronger in the last several years. We have uh, a number of new faculty hires and, and just increased funding overall. I think we're at, we're high, our, at our highest level of external funding, about $28 million uh, in this past year. So, um, so kudos to all the hardworking uh, faculty in the college. You know, we have very strong programs in a number of areas. Uh, we, we have a strong focus in, in cancer, drug disco discovery and development. Right. Um, we also are getting an increasing presence in infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited about that. Um, we have, you know, a, a, some pockets of excellence in pharmacology and drug development. But I think there are opportunities for growth in a number of areas. Um, there's interest in trying to uh, think more about AI and how we should, how AI can aid, especially in the drug develop, drug discovery um, process. I think we don't have a lot of uh, translational work. Um, you know, thinking about all these large uh, publicly available data sets out there, human data sets that can be explored for understanding of, you know, pharmacogenetic questions, looking for biomarkers of drug response. There's a lot of excitement in these areas and we really don't have um, faculty doing that type of research, more translational research. The same, uh, very excited about uh, recent joint hires. We have two young faculty who are joint hires with the medical center. And so opportunities for clinical research there, um, an area that we need to expand on too. Um, and I'm really looking, I, I've been working this year to try to develop uh, relationships with colleagues in bioengineering, other aspects of engineering um, that are relevant to some of the things we do. I'm really excited, hopefully soon we'll have a new Dean in public health and we can start partnering more with public health um, so the CTSA is sort of uh, really trying to expand its outreach beyond medicine. And so there's a role for uh, faculty in the College of Pharmacy there as well. Some of the audience may not know what CTSA is. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the CTSA is the Clinical and Translational Science um, Institute. And they, you know, really are the hub for clinical and translational science. Here at, these are uh, NIH funded institutes across the country. Here at Ohio State, it was largely in medicine. Mm -hmm. And so um, actually one of our alums, one yes. of my classmates, uh, Julie Johnson, uh, came back to Ohio State as well to lead the CTSA. So um, that's a great opportunity for us to be involved in those efforts. And UCSF has always had a track record of Excellent research funding. Yes, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. That's wonderful. The college, uh, as you know, is in the process of creating a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you like to share some highlights of uh, uh, opportunities and where we would need to focus on in coming years? Some highlights. Yeah, so so we've been working on this strategic plan all year. Um, and we're getting close. We just had a very energetic re all day retreat in early May. And I think a number of things came out of that that really align with what I was thinking about when I came into, you know, just some high level areas will, where uh, there'll be things in the strategic plan. Of course, around the research mission, I think expanding research overall, all the way from clinical to discovery biology, um, including applications of AI, uh, that will uh, be a big focus. 
I think um, we, we're sort of calling it modernizing the curriculum, mm -hmm. not just our PharmD curriculum, but also thinking about what else can we do? Are there uh, certificates or micro-credentials that some of our students might be interested in? Maybe adding a data analytics micro-credential could really you know, give new opportunities for graduates of all of our programs mm -hmm. or some combined degrees. Um, you know, those are opportunities that we really haven't expanded on a lot. Um, I'm also a, a, a really important aspect of our strategic plan will be expanding our partnerships. And these are both internal partnerships as well as external partnerships. I, I'm excited by uh, the, the uh, beginnings of opportunities in the pharmaceutical industry in central Ohio. I'm, I'm sure it's only going to expand mm -hmm. in this area. And so I think that gives us opportunities to really start partnering with some of these local companies. Um, so yeah, so I think there's there's lots of uh, lots of things. I, the one one other thing I should mention is we do also want to make sure we're really aligned with our land grant mission. Mm -hmm. And so again, focusing on this advocacy and practice advancement and community engagement will also be part of that plan. And MS in Health System Policy and Leadership Program has had a legacy of absolutely tremendous graduates. Mm -hmm. Many of them are leading huge systems, yeah. and some of them probably are on the in the webinar here. So that's another recruitment we are we are undergoing. Ab right now. Absolutely, we're recruiting a new director right now, and really talking about also what can we do to make sure that those graduates are ready to continue uh, to be the leaders. Uh, in these health systems. So I think there's a lot of exciting um, opportunities for working professionals, partnering with other residency programs. So I think they'll, you'll see a lot of changes in that in the coming years. So I stayed as a new president as of last few months. Mm -hmm. uh, president Carter recently completed his uh, tour of the campus and uh, visited our college. Can you share with us uh, what his visit was like and uh, uh, some of his reactions to what he saw. Um, yeah, so it was it was uh, fun. We each college got ninety minutes with the president, so uh, he is quite engaging. I, and we we're, we spent some time really planning. I had thirty minutes alone with him, and then an hour to show off what I wanted to in the college. So. I was uh, really fortunate that there was a great class of uh, first year pharmacy students and they were doing a team-based activity around a patient case. And so we started off with that and we walked in there. The room got really quiet. <laughs> the dean walks in with the president. Of course, we weren't allowed to tell anyone that he was coming, only the people that were- Supposed to be a surprise visit? Yeah, you know, for security and- yeah. We just, only the people involved knew, so the students were uh, quite surprised, but uh, he walked up to a table of six students and, you know, there's a, a question on the case on the screens in the room and he looked at the first question and said, you know, so what's the answer? And they were, they were amazing. They stepped up and gave him the answer. He asked them questions, they responded, so it was great. And then he, he asked at the end, could I talk to the class? And he told them how much he valued the profession of pharmacy and um, you know what they do is really important and really important for the community. So that was also great. We also, um, we were able to show them the practice lab and students were um, uh, practicing their immunizations in there. And so that was, uh, he, he got to see them in action there. And then we also, you know, kind of walked him around the practice lab and all our counseling rooms and just sort of showed him what type of clinical training they get. Um, and then we showed him some uh, of our research space, including uh, our phenotyping core that's part of the uh, drug discovery efforts mm -hmm. for uh, funded through the cancer center. Um, he was, really into the high-tech equipment in there. <laughs> so he had lots of questions about that and uh, showed him another cancer pharmacology lab 
But we also, I took the opportunity, um, many of you who are listening tonight probably were in Parks Hall a while ago, like I was, and um, this building was built in 1967. And some of the labs were built in 1967. And so we were able to show him, you know, some not very nice labs. And I think he really understands the need for updated lab space here and, and really, um, you know, said he, he noted it. It was it was pretty apparent. So um, so I think that was good. I felt it was important that we showed him both the good and the bad. And so, um, you know, and he he was open to uh, what I had to say. He was very curious about the profession. He was very curious about research funding and how we interact across campus. So I, I, it was a, a win-win all around. I was very excited. And they're not uh, the being fourth in the country. Yes. Also helps. Yes. In making a good case. Absolutely, absolutely. And he brought that up in the as soon as he walked in the door. So. That's great. He was proud of it. He said he uh, he um, uh, put it on his LinkedIn as soon as it got announced that morning. That's so, great. <laughs> so we have him as a supporter. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, engagement is key to any thriving organization, as you know. So what are the ways in which the participants of this webinar uh, and our alumni, donors, and friends can assist us in moving this college forward? Yeah, so, well, first of all, I, I should say it's really been, I didn't really think that much about this aspect of my job because it's not something I've done before, but it was um, really exciting for me to engage with alumni uh, really everywhere during this year. So, you know, I have obviously met a lot of people in Ohio, but I've been to California and I've you know, been in Florida and Colorado, and I just met some of our alums in Taiwan a couple of weeks ago. And so it's really to see their love for the college and um, really their support of what we do. And it is really just heartwarming. And so that, that's been great. Um, you know, I would just say we'd love your involvement. I would encourage everyone uh, to Remain involved if you're already one of our active alums or to join us. Uh, we have events for alumni uh, that you know occur not only in Ohio, but also elsewhere. Um, you know, there's opportunities to be preceptors for our students, even you know, people working outside of the state. If you have an interesting practice site or research site, we'd love opportunities for our students. Um, and of, of course, we're always very grateful for any kind of financial support that um, our, our very uh, loyal alum give us as well. So I think um, we have a, a survey that's out there to try to see what do, what, you know, what do our alumni want to do? How would they like to engage with us? So we'll look at that and, and see if you know, maybe we'll have some new activities uh, based on the, the feedback that we um, get from that. Um, I, we do, uh, our alum are very supportive. Uh, they support our students. We get a lot of financial support for our students, which is really, really important mm -hmm. uh, to be able to get a diverse group of students in here. Um, it's, it's a long route to a PharmD, and so that's, that's uh, it, it's financially straining for a lot of our students. We were able to, I know many of you contributed to the um, Time and Change campaign, mm -hmm. and we hit our $50 million mark. Um, so yeah, big, big achievement. So thank you to everyone who contributed to that. Um, and we still have, we're in the last year of the campaign, and we have one more goal that we'd like to meet as a college, and that is to um, have 3,000 unique donors. And so we're almost there. We're at 92% of that goal, so I'd encourage anyone um, who has not uh, contributed to the Time and Change campaign to help us meet that goal as well. But really, um, the support is, is critical for all of our missions and really um, so, so appreciated. Well, I see one question on the screen here. Uh, people were curious about what's, how's your enrollment right now, uh, both in the PhD, PhD, and MS program, and 
thank you for putting in the numbers. <laughs> Any more you, you would like to say about? Uh... Yeah, so um, so the FarmD, we, we are getting class sizes of, on the on the large size this year, about 138, next year 135, which is quite large, about the size of our classroom. So that's that's really <laughs> our limit is what we can fit in the classrooms that we have. Um, around in the PhD program is, is we're, we're getting, typically we get somewhere between 15 and 20 students a year into the, the PhD total number programs. is about, it has still about the 90 yeah. yeah. So, and, um, the MS, uh, HISPAL program is, uh, is about, uh, we're, we have about, uh, about 20 ish, uh, students in, mm -hmm. in the program at any time. Mm -hmm. And that, that enrollment we'd like to increase. And you know this, I have gone around the country and, and one of the common questions they ask is, how's your enrollment? Right. And when I tell them that we have exceeded our goals mm -hmm. in many of these last 10 years, they are surprised. What are you doing? That is so unique. Yeah. Tell us, give us some formula. <laughs> well, that's what, that's one reason why they're trying to copy the BSPS yes. program. But yes, yes they're, um, they're quite interested. I get that question often. <laughs> so you're ready for our, your questions, please. Uh, Feel free to ask us any questions you might have. What has been most enjoyable part of being back? As we wait for the questions then. Yeah, I think uh, re-engaging with people at Ohio State has been really rewarding. So being back in the college and just, you know, seeing what has changed and being part of it again. It's very different being here as a student and yes. coming back as faculty and as dean. So I think, uh, uh, just, yeah, the, I can't even begin to tell you how many people I've met this year and just thoroughly enjoyed uh, really being around new people and, and seeing a, a new perspective on pharmacy education. And I think we were talking about engaging the alumni or donors mm -hmm. of friends. Absolutely. And also seeking their input about professional development. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. are the needs that they have that we could Right, right. You could offer them help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we would definitely like to, to hear from hear them that, on that. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts you have that uh, oh. to be late? Yeah, so there was a question about how to donate. Uh -huh. And and so um, you can go to pharmacy.osu.edu and click on the Give Now button at the top. This is also... Um, I. I, I'll use this as an opportunity also to put a plug in for our new website. If you haven't been on it, it came, it's been out now for several months. I can't remember exactly when, but it's been several months now. Um, and it's, it really gives a, a new look to the college. So uh, kudos to our marketing communications group that worked on this for quite a while. And I think uh, you'll be excited about all the information at that website. Any other questions? The... Oh, so how? Uh, so someone asked the question about how much time I'm able to spend in the lab as as in my new role as dean. So um, I uh, so I did bring a small lab with me. I, I gave up two grants that I had and and just brought one with me. And one postdoc came with me, and I've uh, rebuilt my lab, so I have a few more people in it now. It's it's a uh, I don't have a lot of time, but I have, I, I carve out time to have group meeting every week and to meet with them. I walk up there when I, when I feel like I don't want to be in another meeting, I actually walk upstairs and mm -hmm. just talk science for a little bit. Sure. So, so I don't have a lot of time, but I think it's important to stay involved in that. And um, I still get really excited about science. So. I want to well, do. I want to do a little bit. I'm looking forward to doing some more collaborative research, which I think will fit my schedule a little bit more. And I've already set up a number of collaborations on campus. Well, kudos to you. Very few deans are able to keep the research going. Yeah, so. we'll see if I can keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> I brought it. <laughs> I wish, wish you very well. For Thank you.
Well, thank you, Diana, for uh, sharing your insights on a variety of topics and the great things happening and being planned here at Ohio State. And thanks to our guests online for spending your evening with us. For those that we were unable to answer your questions live, we will follow up with answers soon. If any questions come up to your mind later on today or tomorrow, send those in and we can respond. And a copy of this recording will be available later. We hope to see you all in person soon. And we are thankful for the network of pharmacy Buckeyes that give back to the college through their talent, time, and treasure. Personally, I must say, it has been a great privilege for me to be a faculty here at the college for 47 years. I couldn't have come to a better place for a rewarding and enjoyable career. Thank you, and have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you.